What's up everybody, this is Danny, and today I'm doing a very cool camera comparison between the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the new Opal Find X6 Pro, and the Galaxy S23 Ultra. So this is a really cool camera comparison because the iPhone and the Galaxy S23 Ultra have has a couple of updates in between, so this is a great revisit, and the Oppo has an amazing triple 50 megapixel camera system that I think is really, really cool. So you are looking at 1080p front-facing video from the Oppo still, but I do like the wider angle of that so it's really cool so let's test these cameras in every condition and see which one is the best let's do it so let's get right into it with the daytime images all of these images were taken on auto mode to make things as fair as possible they all have built-in filters and color tuning and the samsung and oppo phones even have pro mode so you can tune into that perfect shot if you have time but the results that you are seeing today anyone can get these exact same pictures. As you can see, all three of these cameras have different approaches and you can tell with the sky renditions, a lot of the daytime pictures are going to rely heavily on personal preference. They all go back and forth on which one is actually accurate to the scene, but I'm not even sure if accuracy makes a difference anymore. Most people just like the most saturated and the most shareable picture to social media. But if I had to generalize, I would say that the Oppo has more typical processing from that region where the highlights are brightened and sometimes even allowed to clip so most of the shots will come out to be brighter and more vibrant so if you like that picture style you'll really love the Find X6 Pro. I do hope they tune the camera to reduce some of that highlight clipping. The iPhone typically but not always leans on the side of having a more muted shot and also heavily controls the highlights so contrast is usually heavier where the Galaxy S23 Ultra a lot of times meets in the middle of the two which makes the picture so appealing. But let's get into the more important stuff of how these cameras actually differ. Since the Oppo Find X6 Pro has a large 1-inch sensor, you can see better natural depth of field. Take a look here. From the same distance, you get a great separation naturally, and it looks incredible. But it does have a downside. When you get up close, you can see a lot of fringing, which some people may like for a more artistic look. The S23 Ultra again in between the two with the natural bokeh. But the iPhone looks amazing here when it comes to this scenario. But not always are you going to shoot that close. In this food picture, you can see that you get fall off almost immediately after the first shrimp. But honestly, this is going to be personal preference because some people will definitely like this big sensor look. But if you want to use macro mode, all three of these phones have that option. So you can always use this. You can see again, there is more natural bokeh from the Oppo Find X6 Pro. Again, this is because it is using a larger 50 megapixel ultra wide sensor. Speaking of that ultra wide, it is one of the highest quality ultra wides available and it does take some great photos especially during the day the other two max out at 12 megapixel output so cropping into 50 megapixels you can see that extra detail that is retained on this building this might be an easier example to see the difference there's a lot more texture but look at the iphone clipping that sunlight i hope they fix this soon in a software update you crop in and you can see the detail retained in this high resolution mode so if you are an ultra wide shooter you will love the oppo for sure but the downside is that it isn't as wide an angle as the other two and it's definitely noticeable but the bright processing sometimes does excel in scenarios like this these are very challenging shots shooting directly into the sun the iphone suffers the worst with crushing the shadow detail the oppo comes in second and the samsung has the best balance out of the three in this scenario Another big difference with these phones is their zoom capabilities, but I want to start with the 3x telephoto lens. The Oppo has a flagship sensor as a telephoto lens, which can make a difference. From the same distance, they have different focal lengths, but the Oppo has more natural bokeh or background separation without portrait mode. Most of the time, the difference is minor, so in a scenario like this, you won't notice it, but when you get a little closer, like on this drink, you can really tell the difference. Most of the time, you'll be farther back like this, but you will notice it. It does add a nice touch to the 3x zoom shots. Look at the trees back here. Then when you switch over to the portrait mode on the three times zoom, that's when I think this camera really shines. You do see a brighter skin tone, but it looks fantastic. This picture of my family really looks great on all three of them, but I think the balance and dynamic range really shine on the Oppo. Now here's one just for fun, the other two phones with portrait mode on, but this is just the 3x zoom on the Oppo without portrait mode, so you can see the differences. I really love the portrait mode from the 3X camera on the Oppo. I'm consistently getting great shots from it. The bright whites from the Oppo also make this one look extra clean. And in terms of edges, they all do a pretty great job. So let me know which one that you think is doing better here. We can't talk about zoom without doing a full range test. Here is a shot with the main lens on all three phones. Then here is the 3X lens. And you can see that the Oppo is really oversaturating here on this water. 
then here is the 6x option that you get with the Oppo, which is right in the camera UI and it looks great, but you can see it's changed the watercolor, so I hope consistency can be optimized with future software updates. And here is the 10x zoom on all three, but you can see the quality difference with the 10x optical zoom on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. It is just so good, it's hard to beat. Having that extra reach with optical quality comes in so clutch, and this is one of the biggest reasons to have an S23 Ultra in your pocket. Here is another test that tests the maximum zoom range. There is the 3x zoom, and they all look very similar besides the color differences. There is that 6x hybrid zoom choice again on the Oppo Find X6 Pro. There is the 10x zoom on all three, and to be honest, I'm surprised the iPhone still looks this decent at 10x digital. Let's go to 30x on the Oppo and Samsung where the iPhone is maxed out at 15x. And you can start to see here the Samsung is starting to pull forward with the clarity and you can really see the difference here where the Oppo can go up to a crazy 120x zoom. The oil paint effect is definitely there where the S23 Ultra you can make out the couch. So the Samsung still remains the king of zoom. If you want the highest resolution available on a smartphone, then look no further than the S23 Ultra. It has a 200 megapixel sensor. This one here is a great example of a landscape. The S23 Ultra with the most conservative approach when it comes to brightness, but crop into Oppo's 50 megapixel mode and you can see that it is detailed, but it is clearly over sharpened. The iPhone very impressive with this 12 megapixel output, but the Samsung comes out on top, maintaining incredible amounts of detail at this crop. Here is another example of the over sharpening on Oppo's high resolution mode. I hope they can dial that down slightly in the future. Okay, so two more things before we jump into night mode. First is the front facing camera. Again, Oppo does have the brighter skin tones, but you may or may not like it. The thing that I do love is that the Find X6 Pro does have the widest angle when it comes to the selfie camera, so you can see how much more is in the frame from the same arm's distance. When it comes to portrait mode, you still get that same great wide angle, and even in this harsh sunlight, they're all doing a great job. In this one, the iPhone has the brightest shot. Take a look at my shirt. It is boosting up that shadow detail. And in this one, the S23 Ultra is the darkest, but controlling the harsh lighting, maintaining skin tone. So I think these again will come down to personal preference. So let me know which one that you think did the best out of these three. I really do like having that wider angle on the front facing camera like this. And in this one, I like the Oppo best. So let's talk about daytime video. I compared them at 4K 30 frames per second because this is a setting that they all have. The Galaxy S23 Ultra is the only one out of the three that features 8K video. So if you want that feature, you'll have to go with the S23 Ultra. But when it comes to video, they all have great dynamic range and are full of detail. The colors are slightly different, so you'll need to pick the one that you prefer. In this one, they all look pretty similar besides the highlight detail. You can see that the S23 Ultra is trying to balance the entire scene with no clipping of those highlights, so it appears slightly dark. Darker. The color replication difference can really be seen here in the sky, a purple tinge on the Oppo, the S23 Ultra in the middle, and the iPhone with the most accurate rendition. You can see the more aggressive bouncing of those highlights in the clouds again on the S23 Ultra, so it does appear the flattest in this scenario. I personally like the iPhone's overall rendition better, but I don't blame you if you like the S23 Ultra's better overall. You could always bump up the shadows in post-production, but straight out of the camera, I like the iPhone 14 Pro Max. When it comes to stabilization, I still think the best is a toss up between the S23 Ultra and the iPhone. The Oppo seems to pick up the bounces and movements more with the main sensor than the other two, but I think all three do a good job with walking footage, so let me know which one that you like better in the comments below. So let's jump into nighttime or low light photography, and I think this is where some of the clear differences lie. The first thing that I want to clear up is normally I shoot one picture with night mode and then one without night mode to see the difference between them. But the Oppo, as far as I know, doesn't give you an option of turning that off. So if you take a picture with the photo mode, it automatically exposes longer for a second or two. The shots are automatically adjusted for night. So I just took all the pictures in night mode. So that's the reason why you don't see them labeled because they are all with night mode engaged. When it comes to the main sensor shots, I think they all do a great job of brightening up the scene and capturing the details. There will be saturation, contrast, and processing differences, and it does go back and forth where one might take the better shot than the other, like here on the neon sign. You can see that the iPhone has the brighter highlights and exposes differently to create a slightly brighter rendition, where the S23 Ultra has the more contrasty approach, but allows the highlights to still shine, where the Oppo mutes the neon to bring the balance to the entire shot, so it will be personal preference. I did notice that the iPhone did expose the longest in extreme dark conditions, where the Oppo is the shortest with every shot being less than two seconds, so that's very impressive. 
impressive. Pandora is so dark at Disney's Animal Kingdom, this is the perfect place to test these cameras to their max. This is what I meant when I said it goes back and forth. The iPhone does have the more accurate rendition of the scene, and the Oppo is super impressive with that shorter exposure time, but the S23 Ultra, while not accurate, the details are unbelievable. Look at the shadow detail it picks up here. I mean, it is crazy. Here even with the shorter exposure, the Find X6 Pro captures more shadow detail, but all three do a great job in this scenario. But this scene is super dark in real life. You can see this is where the iPhone struggles. All of the blue is just mixed together. Where on the Find X6 Pro, the area is perfectly clear. And where the S23 Ultra lands in the middle of the two, which is not a bad thing. So for me at night is where the Find X6 Pro really starts to shine. So it's not like all three of these aren't great cameras. But let's look at some of the other lenses to see if this is where they really start to differ. I really had high hopes for Oppo's 50 megapixel ultra wide at night because it's one of the high quality ultra wides available and it can sometimes be the best in the pictures as you can see in this shot but I took a lot of ultra wide shots and I didn't see a huge difference between all three in fact sometimes the s23 ultra does better in certain scenarios like this one the night mode balanced it better on the Samsung side and while in rise of resistance I took a few shots that didn't engage night mode and you can see here that the iPhone has more detail so while the ultra wide isn't bad whatsoever I just didn't see a huge difference now where you can see a clear difference is in the three time zoom lens. This one is absolutely no contest. The clarity that is maintained and the noise reduction is unmatched on the Find X6 Pro. And while my daughter isn't thrilled to be taking pictures sweaty on a super hot night, just look at the difference in the 3x portrait mode. It is night and day. The Samsung isn't too bad and it is better than the iPhone's 3x lens, but the Oppo is so good. I went around and took a ton of pictures with the 3x lens and just look at the clarity difference here. It is really impressive. And while all the shots might not have a huge drastic difference, this is where I want to see smartphone zoom lenses going. This is the best 3x nighttime experience that I've had on a smartphone so far. Here is a zoom test just in case you were wondering with the night mode, this is the main lens. This is the 3x zoom, they all look pretty good on this one. And here is that 6x hybrid option on the Oppo if you wanted to see it at night. And then here is the 10x zoom. The iPhone just didn't do well due to the long exposure time. It is blurry. The S23 Ultra with the 10x optical does pick up the most detail, but the noise is still present while the Oppo does have a more aggressive noise reduction, but impressive for hybrid zoom at night. Nighttime videos where I was also seeing a difference with the Oppo. Again, let me reiterate how dark this area is at Pandora Land. You can see the level of noise reduction while maintaining clarity on the Oppo. They are all showing effects from the low light and the stabilization is suffering. But the Oppo, I feel like it shows more of a jelly effect from possibly using electronic stabilization. This is just a guess, but regardless, super impressive on the detail. Here is a non-walking shot of that same area and you can see that the detail on the ground is maintained while it does have the most contrast. It is really great to see video done so well on the Android side of things. Look at the detail on the ground here, just impressively sharp on the Oppo. When you see it next to the other two, you can actually see a difference. Now these are probably the best video smartphones that you can buy right now, so let me know if you're as surprised as I was when I was doing this testing. I did not expect this level of nighttime video performance from the Oppo. In this scenario, the iPhone still has the highest dynamic range and you can see the curtains clearly on the iPhone's video where on the S23 Ultra, while it looks fantastic, it's slightly less detailed where the Oppo here is just hyper saturated. So the Oppo could use some video tuning, especially when it comes to the saturation and the exposure changes, but I'm sure that this can be updated with software. But even with portrait mode video, it is so detailed. So Oppo, you got something here. Please keep working on this. I also found by accident that it left it in portrait mode on the Oppo and I think it's shooting in 1080p. And while you can see much cleaner video by a long shot, the stabilization is not available for some reason. So you need to keep that in mind. Again, look at how much more detailed that video is. It's really insane. With the ultra wide angle, it is more of the same thing. The video performance is great, but the stabilization I believe has to be using electronic stabilization of some sort because the jelly effect is so heavy picking up my walk. But the clarity of the video is far above the other two. So Oppo, please update this if you are watching. So what did you think of the Oppo Find X6 Pro? Did it surprise you or are you just sticking with the Apple or Samsung options? 
I am so disappointed that this phone is not available globally at this time. I think they should release it. I think the photography is so good on this camera that a lot of times it is edging out the best that's out there. And that 3X camera is definitely something that I want in every camera. But like any other device, there are some drawbacks like over sharpening and also the front facing camera at night definitely could use some work. The S23 Ultra is easily the better front facing camera out of all three of these phones. And I did see more lens flaring than I would have liked on a video test that I did here, but that is something to consider when shooting video with a bright light source in the front. Now, I'm personally impressed by how well the Oppo did against the best in the industry, so let's see what they can do with some software updates. And the future is looking bright for Oppo and their other brands that share their technologies like OnePlus. So let me know which one that you think won in the comments below. Thumbs up if you like these comparisons. They take me forever, but I do love doing them. So subscribe if you feel like it, and I will see you guys in the next one.